Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS AH64D video, we'll be going over the controls and pages of the Fire Control Radar, or FCR. The FCR can be used by the pilot or the CPG to detect and engage targets. However, it can only be used by one crew member at any given time. Like the HMD and TADS, the FCR must be selected as the crewman's site before it can be used. Once selected as a site, the various controls of the FCR become active within the cruise station. The FCR controls can be found on the collective mission grip in either cruise station or on the left and right TDAC grips of the CPG station. Regardless of whether the FCR is operated from the TDAC grips or the collective mission grip, the FCR functions for each switch remain the same. Let's now take a look at the most relevant commands for the FCR. And most of these commands can be found on the mission group of the collective, which is the same between the pilot seat and the CPG seat. Now it's important to also to note that many of these commands are also mirrored on the left and right hand grips in the CPG seat. But for the purposes of this video, we'll focus on the CPG seat, which is most often where you'll be using the FCR. So first, let's take a look at the axis commands. And the two important ones here, first is HOCAS cursor controller X-axis and HOCAS controller Y-axis. And we'll be using this to move around the cursor on the MPD screens, as well as the TDU, which we'll take a look at later. Uh, further down, we have RHG for right-hand grip and manual track controller X-axis, and the same for the Y-axis. And we'll use this to move around the sensor, in this case, the FCR. Let's now go to the collective, which again, it's the same between the front and back seat. And much of this is mirrored again on the uh, hand grips. Uh, first, we have the FCR mode switch, uh, down for ATM, up for TTM or ground targeting mode, which is what we'll look at today, uh, right for RMAP and left for TPM. Right below that is FCR scan size switch for down, left, right, and up. And below that is the FCR scan switch, we have continuous scan burst, and we have a single scan burst. And near the bottom, we have the site select switch, which we talked about before. So we have left for FCR, which we'll look at today, and then up for the HMD, down for link, and right for TADS. The last one I wanna take a look at is on the right hand grip. And this is one of the reasons you may wanna be in the CPG seat when using the FCR. The important one here is the right hand grip FCR scan size switch. So kind of like the TADS, we have medium, narrow, wide, and zoom. Okay, so uh, here we are in the uh, CPG seat and coming down at the collective, of course, we have the mission grip here at the top. Above that, we have the uh, left hand grip and here we have the continuous and single scamper switch as well as the FCR mode switch. And on the right hand grip, we have the site select switch as well as the FCR scan size switch. Okay, jumping back to the pilot seat, the first thing we're gonna do is power up the FCR. But before we can do that, we need to get some power on the aircraft. So we will turn on the battery and get the AP running. Okay, so we can get power to the FCR either through the weapon page or the FCR page. Uh, if you want to do the weapon page, go to weapon page, utility, and we can see that FCR is on L3, but it's currently barriered because currently the MMA or mass mounted assembly is pinned. Let's take a look at from the FCR page. So FCR, you can see FCR is not powered. We're gonna go to utility. Again, FCR is barriered. So we're gonna go MMA from pinned to normal. And now it takes about a minute to run the built-in test or BIT. But if we want to, we can go ahead and hit uh, L4 to override that and uh, get the FCR up and running a little faster. Come back out of utility. And now we've got an FCR page. Jumping back to the CPG seat with the FCR running, we can now select left on the site select switch to select the FCR. And we do that, we can see that the FCR is auto paged to the left MPD. We also now have the TAS up on the helmet. 
And this is going to be particularly useful for later when we add the link function, but that will come for a later video. The SCR page has three primary elements. We have the heady tape at the top, the high action display at the bottom, much like the iHads. In the center, we have the actual FCR page, which is a top-down view of the battlefield. On either side of the SCR page, we have arrows, and we can use these to manually slew the antenna on one scan width left to right. So, for example, if I press the right arrow, it slews it one scan width to the right. And we can see that represented by the radome symbol up on the heading tape, as well as the solid line in the field or the guard box on the hat or the high action display. Let's go ahead and center it up by pressing the left arrow. We'll go to the left now, and then back to the right to center it up. Now, in addition to the arrows, we can use the manual tracker control on the right hand grip to more precisely move it around, but you can only do so if the sight is not slaved. It's also important to understand that when you slew the FCR left and right using the manual track controller, you can also see this represented on the TSD. And as you might imagine, this can be super useful to align yourself and your FCR scan pattern. At L4, we have the target button. We'll talk about that in a later video. Below that at L5 is the antenna elevation control. And that can either be auto, which it is right now, or manual. Let's switch it to manual by pressing L5. It's then replaced by up and down arrows. We also see a scale of the elevation of the radar in the bottom left corner. So as you might imagine, if I wish to raise the antenna elevation, I'll hit the up arrow, which you can see reflected in the scale, or the down arrow to reduce it. Up at the top, we have a C-scope, and on the right, we have zoom, and both of those functions will come in later updates. And finally, in the uh, bottom right, we have the acquisition source, and this remains unchanged as we've seen in earlier videos. So now, let's take a look at the utility page. The three items of interest here are first at L3, the FCR power switch, which allows us to power on and power off the FCR, which we took a look at earlier. Then of course, at L5, we have the elevation control between manual and automatic, which we just talked about. And then finally, at R4, we have the priority scheme, which can be A, B, or C, and this will determine what information is displayed in the high action display or HAD. We can also place the FCR up on the TDU on the TDAC, and this gives us a closer view of the FCR and also frees up an MPD. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and place the weapon page on the left MPD and move the FCR to the TDU. Uh, next, naturally, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. So let's go to uh, daylight. And from the top, I'm going to select the FCR button. And now we can see it displayed here in black and white. Obviously, it's not gonna be color like the left and right MPDs. So to interact with it, we're gonna to need to use the Hocast cursor, which is currently in the bottom left corner of the weapon display. So we're gonna use the bump method to move it over. So we're gonna move it over to the right side of the display and bump and over. If I wanna move it over to the TSD, same thing, move it to that side and bump. Bring it back. And with the cursor on my FCR, I can use that to interact with the controls. So if I wanted to slew the uh, FCR scan to the left, I'll place the cursor over the left arrow, depress and release, and it does just that. Let's go back to the right. Okay, so now let's start taking a look at scanning. Alrighty, so I'm sitting here in my battle position having a sandwich, and you can see I got the uh, weapon page up on the left MPD the FCR in the center TDU and the TSD on the right. And on the TSD, around PFZ1, I have some targets that are probably around there. But you can see I have a very wide FCR footprint. Actually, it is the wide setting. But I could also go to medium, narrow, and zoom. But for now, I'm gonna keep it at medium. And I'm going to adjust the azimuth a bit to better cover that area. And now I'm going to conduct a single burst scan. Up on the FCR, we see the wiper sweep back and forth to scan the area, and we have several contacts. And we can estimate the range of those contacts by those arcs, four of them. And each arc is in a two-kilometer spacing, so two, four, six, eight at max range. 
Uh, we can also see on the TSD those contacts are yellow, and they would also be yellow on the MPD FCR page as well. Let's now take a closer look at the FCR and the MPD page and talk about some of the unit classification symbols. An H-looking symbol indicates a track vehicle, a circle indicates a wheeled vehicle, a triangle an air defense vehicle, and a squared an unknown vehicle. If the unit is moving, it's solid with a small black dot in the center. Later on, we'll also add units for both fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters. The maximum range to detect a target is 6 kilometers for a stationary and up to 8 kilometers for a moving target. There are also two modifier symbols. The large diameter on a symbol is the next to shoot or NTS target and the large triangle around a symbol is the alternate next to shoot target. These are your two primary targets. And up in the top right hand corner is the number of targets detected, in this case eight. In the next video, we'll go over how to set target priorities, how to select different targets for engagement, and how to employ onboard weapons against SCR targets. Thanks for watching.